Hello there, welcome to the Ambling Custodian, the blog that is now also a vlog. Drugs are bad is a statement which is both true and something of a cliche, and the reason for this, I think, is that far too often we focus on just one reason why drugs are bad. They kill you. Now don't get me wrong, this is true to a large extent. Most illegal drugs are extremely dangerous, unregulated or otherwise, and addiction is a disease which often leads to crime, broken lives, and sadly, usually, eventually, death. However, the reason drugs are truly terrible, the thing that we don't focus on enough, is the way in which drugs are farmed, produced, manufactured, distributed, and then sold. The supply chain from the ground to your bloodstream is why I think some drugs are awful. I don't want to focus on whether or not the deregulation of drugs will solve this problem. What I want to focus on is the situation as it is and why no one who cares about the well-being of others should be taking certain kinds of drugs. I say certain kinds of drugs because I recognize that not all drugs are equal in this sense. Some supply chains are less harmful than others. Heck, if you grow, prepare and smoke your own weed, then power to you. That's a damn sustainable and commendable drug supply chain you've got there. The sentiments expressed in the previous to not reflect the views of the Amling Rustolian. The Amling Rustolian does not condone the growing use or selling of weed, hashish, or marijuana or cannabis of any kind. The Amling Rustolian is from Bristol, a city which is not even remotely aware of cannabis. Nope. No cannabis use in this city. No, sir. What I want to talk about in this video is the supply chain that was responsible for cocaine, heroin's posher, richer, and all-around whiter younger brother. If you have done cocaine in your life, and you didn't take at least a moment to think about how it got into your nose, then you have absolutely no right to lecture anyone about fair trade products, sustainable palm oil, or vegetarianism. Cocaine is a fucking bastard. Cocaine starts life as a harmless and rather cute looking little leaf called erythrozylon. That thing is native to South America and it's been chewed by the indigenous people of South America for centuries. And cocaine is just one of 14 other chemical substances that can be extracted from the leaf. It wasn't until the 19th century, 1880 to be precise, when a number of companies were able to isolate the chemical that seemed to be having the desired effect on people. And so it was the powdered form of cocaine hydrochloride, or cocaine for short, was born. Things started off innocent enough. Scientists studying the drug raved about its positive uses. No lesser a scientist than Sigmund Freud loved the drug. Ironically, he thought that what cocaine was best at was curing addiction. Oh, Sigmund. Silly, silly Sigmund. How wrong you were. For a long time, the negative aspects of cocaine and researchers growing addiction to it was silenced by a wave of positive publicity. Soon the drug was open to the mass public and it could be found in everything, from margarine to ointment to red wine. And then one guy decided it'd be a brilliant idea to put the stuff into a brown, sugary drink. Yes, Seriously. Why do you think it's called Coke, guys? At this point, Coca-Cola would probably like me to point out that Coca-Cola no longer contains cocaine, just a shitload of sugar instead. I mean, the people of Coca-Cola wouldn't lie to you now, would they? Well, they might. But they haven't. I mean, they might, but they haven't. Moving on. It wasn't long until people started realizing that this cure for addiction was pretty Moorish itself. People started having withdrawal symptoms and, you know, dying. Spoiler alert, cocaine is bad for you, like really bad for you, and when people started realising this, it soon enough became illegal. Not straight away though, journalism had to step in first, because if people don't know something is a problem, then the government don't have to solve the problem. To quote Thomas Pynchon, if they can get you asking the wrong questions, they don't have to worry about answers. Just going to put a picture of Xi Jinping shaking hands with the state media after demanding absolute loyalty here for no reason whatsoever. Anyway, in 1914, an expose in the New York Times talked about how, and I'm quoting the article here, lower class blacks and cocaine crazed Negroes and Negro cocaine fiends were turning to the drug because it was legal and whiskey was not. 
So you could argue that prohibition helped to introduce cocaine into working class African American communities. However, as dark and as dismal as the history of US government's relationship with African American people has been, I honestly don't think they did this on purpose. This is a conspiracy free zone, guys. Still, regardless of the US government's intention, the prohibition of alcohol and the prohibition of cocaine later that year led to the inevitable. Working class people, black and white, were now addicted to an outlawed substance. Oh fuck. By the late 1970s and early 1980s, cocaine was mainly limited to the super rich. Q Scarface, The Wolf of Wall Street, and a whole sorry series of famous musicians and actors dying of cocaine overdose. That doesn't mean that it wasn't responsible for crime in poor and working class neighborhoods though. After all, somebody's got to supply the rich guy with this illegal drug, and the person who does this is not always Johnny Depp. Sometimes the crime involved in the cocaine trade is a lot less charming than Hollywood makes it out to be. So what about today? Well, today Mexico and Colombia are both heavily involved in the cocaine trade, and while it's hard to find reliable sources about the exact amount of money involved and who's involved, if I knew the answer to those questions I would either be A, a policeman, or B, a drug trafficker, it's fair to say that the drug is a pretty big deal in South America. Many, many working class South Americans are involved in the cocaine supply chain in some way, and many, many working class South Americans die because of it. A lot of this death, you could argue, is because of the heavy-handed way in which both the US and South American governments have cracked down on the manufacture, distribution, and use of the drug. You could argue that, but don't think for a second that means that taking cocaine is okay. If you take cocaine, you are helping to fund an industry of violence. Yes, arguably your use of cocaine helps to give someone a job, but it's a job that automatically turns people into criminals by definition. Whether or not you feel that the people involved in the cocaine supply chain should or should not be criminals is beside the point. The fact is, they are. When you buy cocaine, chances are it came from a poor nation where the manufacture, distribution and trade of the drug is illegal and unregulated. The lack of regulation means who knows how many human disasters, workplace fatalities, unfair wages, violent management. You know how people say that you shouldn't buy Nike shoes or drink Starbucks coffee because of their unsafe, unsustainable and unfair supply chains? Yeah, well, multiply that problem by like a million and you start to see why buying cocaine is a fucking stupid and indefensible thing to do. Now, I'm not trying to be all holier than thou here. I have made and continue to make decisions with my purchases that lead to low wages, environmental damage, or exploitation of some kind. We all do. Have you got a mobile phone? Probably. Do you know how it was made? Possibly not. If you don't own a Fairphone, one of the only phone manufacturers genuinely committed to the development of safe phones, then chances are it was made in some less than fair ways. Drugs though, cocaine in particular, can and often does lead to much, much worse for those who are employed by the industry. There is, I'm afraid, no such thing as fair trade, sustainable or locally sourced cocaine. You are helping no one. In fact, you are making things a lot worse. Regulating cocaine might go some way to making the industry safer and fairer, but if you decrease the demand, then you decrease the supply, and the supply of cocaine is what leads to the arrests and murder of so many people who are most probably much less fortunate than yourself. Your mate Barry might have had to do a six-month stint in prison for possession, but that's nothing compared to what happens to the poor bastards who get caught trafficking the stuff or who are shot by someone for selling the stuff. Cocaine is not inherent bad, it's just one of 14 other chemicals that are naturally found in this harmless little leaf, but the cocaine industry in its current form most definitely is bad. If you care about the well-being of millions of poor and working class people from nations across the world, then think twice before agreeing to buy a gram from your mate Madge at the after show party of some half-decent production of A View from the Bridge that your mate Sandra starred in. All of that may seem disconnected from the death and destruction that the cocaine industry causes, but it isn't. It just isn't. Don't do drugs, kids. Thanks for watching.